What we're going to do is take the sewn rectangle and cut the lining the exact same size as the sewn rectangle. So you'll have four pieces of lining if you have four sewn rectangles. Next we're going to cut the inside batting. I like to use Annie's Soft and Stable. It makes for a really great Mondo bag. And you cut that exactly the same size as the sewn rectangle also. We're going to take the lining and put it even with the soft and stable. Line it up nice. And we're going to stitch around it. Now for the pocket, you're going to take your width of fabric and your fold, and we're going to take about uh, nine inches from the top is where we're going to place the fold. And it makes for an easy way to make a pocket out of one with the fabric. I like to put a couple pins in just to secure the pocket before I do the sewing. Once you have your pocket in place, you're going to take your sewn rectangle and put it toward the top of the pocket area and just cut off what's left. And that will be your piece for the um, pocket. Now I like to use a different fabric for the pocket side so that I always know where the pocket is when I'm actually using the bag. For the handles, you're going to take your two and a half inch strips and put those right sides together on top of your two and a half inch strip of soft and staple. And then we are going to put a couple pins in to secure them all together. And stitch a quarter inch from the edge. I like to use a quarter inch foot. Then you're going to turn them with a fast turn number six. Now you're going to pin your lining to the soft and stable with the soft and stable against the wrong side of the lining piece. And then baste just along the edges uh, between where the seam would be and the raw edges. Just a little bit to secure them together. Now you're going to be taking two of your pieces and putting them right sides together to form an L. You're going to sew them so that they make an L. You might want to put a couple pins in there. And on your pocket piece, make sure that your pocket is toward the top.
Now take your L's and flip one and you see that I have some clothespins in there too. That's to remind me to leave that part open when I sew the seam for the turning section. So I just match the center seam and then flip over the L and sew. So to make your seams, we're going to flip the bottom of the bag, one of the L's, along the diagonal. And you can see that this part is the part I'm going to leave open between those. Before we sew that seam, I'll show you this one. Again, I'm just folding on the diagonal and then I'm matching the seam up, the pieces up. So there's the diagonal. That's just a fold. And I'm going to start right where you see my fingers here. And I'm going to sew from that little diagonal point, quarter inch, all the way to the edge of one of the rectangles. And here's where you want to stop at the clothespin reminders to leave a little opening that we'll use to turn the bag later. After you've sewn all four seams, and that last one might be a little wonky to sew, but keep going. You've got, your, this is what your bag will look like, sort of these diagonal seams. And I turn the lining part right side out and the bag is going to be turned inside out. Then I'm going to slip the lining inside so that the mat so that the right sides are matching. The right side of the fabrics are matching. And just play with it a little bit to get those um, dips and valleys and points all uh, even. The handles go inside the bag but you can see them. Just put some pins. I like to put pins at the top and at the valleys to start with, kind of um, matching everything up. If the lining has to go a little bit off, um, extend a little bit beyond, don't worry about that. And just go around um, pinning and matching. You're going to sew on the interfacing side on the line and that'll make sure that you get really nice uh, squares and matching. Um, if the pins are in the way, pull them out. When you get to the corners, you can do a nice pivot. And um, you can see here how you're just gonna back stitch a little bit for a little reinforcement and pivot and keep going. When you get to the handle area, it says right on the interfacing, handle stitching line, and that's exactly what you do. Go right across there. I like to go across a couple times for a little bit of reinforcement. Back stitch back and forth a little bit.
Now, if there's any excess lining, just trim that off. And you're also going to want to trim or clip at the little valleys there. And that's going to make it easier to turn. You just clip to the stitching. Now you're going to turn it through that opening that you left. Turn it right side out. And you might need a little bit of muscle here. It's a big bag, but it's going to be beautiful and it's not going to take you too long at all to turn that right side out. Now stuff the lining back into the bag and definitely want to poke out each of the four bottom corners nicely. Going to really make your bag look great when you do it that way. So you're going to want to do a nice finger press. Take your time with this. At each of the little valleys you might need to give a little bit of a tug and uh, that will really make your bag uh, nice and crisp for you. We're also going to finish it off with a top stitching and that's just going to be a great ending for the bag. The very last thing you do is turn it wrong side out again and you stitch up where you had the opening. And you can just flip that and stitch and look at that bag. It's just fabulous and you are going to love using it. So now that you have your Mondo bag made, you're going to love our little ones that go great with that. This is a little midi bag and the bitty bags. These are great for traveling with toiletries and all. I know you're going to love these. Have fun.